Greetings, unsettled souls. All of the news stories that you are about to hear are every bit as real as they always are on the show. However, in Halloween, in honor of Halloween, I should say, we are going to go ahead and bring you people that help the correct views. These people have never existed, but might. First up, Thor Manoff. Thor Mantuff, he has been our uh, liberal correspondent. Christelle, I uh, pretty much brings us all of the uh, pro-Obama news. Thor Mantuff, uh, you ever meet anyone like him before? I can't say that I have. Let, let's bring him on. Let's have him. Hello, and welcome to the welcome to the correct views, girlfriend. All right, look, this here is. Um, well, it's from Zero Hedge. It says, clip of unmanned NASA rocket exploding shortly after takeoff. Like, it was like a premature ejaculation thing. It happened, like, in Russia. I guess Putin is having trouble getting his rockets up or something. I don't know. Several months ago, a Russian rocket carrying Russia's most advanced communication satellite exploded on launch. And West was amused at Russia's seeming's incompetence while birthing extensive speculation on the NSA's involvement. While moments ago, either Karma or Russian hackers intervened, and six seconds after launch, and I didn't take any time at all, and NASA, the unmanned Antares rocket of rocket maker Orbiter Sciences, likewise ended its mission prematurely. And I don't know about you, but whenever anybody, like, kind of does the, the premature thing, I'm not, like, a real big fan, even if they're, like, a big Russian, you know. So not my thing. The, the stock of the rocket maker orb appears to be likewise in flames after hours, down some 8.5 at last check. And the, the biggest problem with that, you see, and you don't have things like that in this country because Obama has done great things in space, like shutting NASA down. Um, oh, yeah, he, we, he's done great. He, there's, no pollution, there's no pollution up in space at all, girlfriend, because he ain't sending nothing up there. That's the, that's the Obama solution to, he's so smart. So anyway, anyway, what they were doing was they were trying to bring up needed supplies to the space station up in the, well, no, the one that's in the sky. And I, I don't know, but they said that the rocket that was supposed to go up didn't make it, girlfriend. It didn't make it. And I only got one more story because Sam said I'm kind of annoying to listen to and he doesn't ever want to put me on air. So I finally let him let me do a show. Leave in a comment line letting him know I did a good job. Uh, Betabeat.com. Google's new commuter, computer with human learning abilities or program itself. So, I mean, I guess if your rocket doesn't really get it up, these machines will program it to do things. I, I don't know which direction this is going, and this is so confusing. In college, it wasn't rare to hear a verbal battle regarding artificial intelligence erupted between my friends studying neuroscience and my friends studying computer science. One rather outrageous fellow would mention the possibility of a computer takeover and off it went. The neuroscience savvy awe of the potential of such hybrid technology as CS majors argued. So basically, the computer is programmed to go ahead and program itself, and that way people don't have to program them anymore, and that way it costs a lot less money. And anything that costs a lot less money is something that must have been thought of by Obama because he's kept our health care prices so far down. Anyway, that's really all I've got. I'm going to go ahead and prance on over here and get ready for Pierre Le Pimp. He's got some stories I, I think he, he's going to want to get to. Bye. So anyway, friends, as you're listening to this, please try to keep in mind that the most important thing you can do is remember that all of this news that you're getting from all of the wonderful correspondents here, Christelle, go ahead and tell them, this is all actual news stories. It's just that for Halloween, it seemed much more appropriate to go ahead and, I don't know, bring on some of the people that help us every day. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Yep. They don't really get much airtime at all. And I, I think they're going to be quite popular. I really do. Pierre... I am ready. I am ready for this show. 
Oui, oui. And welcome to the section of the show, the express.co.uk. Sleeping with more than 20 women reduces male risk in prostate cancer. I like that. See, I like the girls. I like the girls. I do. I like them. Sometimes I like them too much. I like the girls. Sleeping with numerous women protects men from prostate cancer. A study has found it. I've always been most interested in not, not getting 20 women. Rush Limbaugh mentioned that it wasn't all on one time. Research showed that Lotharios with lots of notches on their belts are significantly less likely to develop the disease compared with men who have had only one sexual partner in their lifetime. Those with scored 20 conquests with 28% reduced risk of being diagnosed. But the same is not true for gay encounters. Thor. But the same is not true for gay encounters, according to Canadian scientists. In fact, more than 20 male partners doubled the risk of prostate cancer. Their findings are from the Prostate Cancer and Environment Study, in which 3,208 men answered questions regarding their lifestyle and their sex lives. Lead researcher Professor Marie Elise Parent from the University of Montreal said it is possible that having many female sexual <laughs> having many female sexual partners resulted in a higher frequency of ejaculations that is protective against prostate cancer. So it, unlike the rocket that it did not go up, it looks like if you can in fact get these to go up, it can be really good. I've got a one more story for you myself. It is from Metro, like the Metro section. Grave robot dug up 29 girls and turned them into human girls. He likes the little girls, yeah. He likes the little girls a little bit too much, yeah. And that genius grave robber is to spend the rest of his life in psychiatric hospital after digging up the corpses of 29 children and turning them into dolls. He, li he likes the little girls. Antonelli Muscovin, a highly educated historian who spoke 13 languages, mummified dozens of young girls and kept them in the bedroom of the flat, where he lived with his parents after ransacking their graves. He, li he likes the little girls. And when mother, whose murdered 10 year old Dr. Orgel was dressed as a human doll and kept in the home of the daughter seven, nine years old, spoke of her pain after reading quotes of Mishkiven. He was leaving notes upon the grave site. He really liked the little girl. These sick anonymous notes were addressed to my daughter, calling her little lady. It appears that he put a music box into her web cage. For reasons that it does not say, it seems that he has been admitted to psychiatric hospital. It does not say why. And that is all I have for you today. But we have Larry throw him back later, and uh, I'm going to bring him your way as soon as I go this way. That was arguably the worst reporting that I've ever heard. Now, I, I'll do a lot better next time. It would be almost impossible for you to have done much worse. Uh, Christelle, whose idea was it to bring him on? I believe it was your idea. It was my idea. Oh, I kind of wish I hadn't asked. Well, things can only get better from here. Let's only hope that Larry, my partner in filming, and also, whenever I'm really tired, helps me drive. Oh, Larry the driver's going to be on? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. It's, oh, all right. Works. All right, great. Let's bring him on. All right. Here's Larry throwing back. Come on, Larry. Oh, okay. You ready? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah? Uh -huh. All right. Here's Larry, everyone. Hi, every, uh, every, every, everyone. Hey, Larry, you uh, spilled something. Uh, yeah, you can have some. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah. Thank you. I... Are we, are we still going to film that way? I gotta drive. 
new drug for mild alcoholics, drinking two glasses of wine a night. Two, two glasses of wine? Two glasses of wine makes you a colaholic. Uh, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous probably doesn't mention something about hundreds of thousands of people drinking about a bottle, half a bottle of wine are to be put as the first ever drug to help reduce alcohol consumption. Excuse me. On their plans announced by the National Institute for Health and Actual Care, men drinking three pints of beer and women drinking two large glasses of wine. Why did the, why did the women get the wine and the men got the beer? Men drinking three pints of beer and women drinking two large glasses of wine per night and who do not cut down within two weeks should be prescribed a new drug, Nice, Nice has said. Well, he doesn't sound very nice to me. I don't know why it doesn't make any difference. So I guess if, if men drink the wine and the, men, and the women drink the beer, it looks like you're... In, That'd be nice. There's an estimated 75, shit, 75, 750,000 people in the UK who would be eligible for an amphetamine who show no overt symptoms associated with drinking. That, that's good. But you don't want to get a UID. The plans be, don't, don't ridicule me off camera. You're supposed to be helping me. The plan means that GPs were actively ask patients about their alcohol consumption when they see them for unrelated health matters such as low mood, inability to sleep. Yeah, I've never had anybody to drink two glasses of wine and have an inability to sleep. And diabetes and high blood pressure. Uh, I guess the, it says it. That's what they'll do if they ask you. So it looks like if you just lie, it'll be fine. And the drug which costs three. This is like a, a Latin thing. A, a, three, a euro per tablet is taken when they look a little squiggly. When they see the people fill the urge to drink. Larry, and, they can't see the squiggly. Oh, it's over here. The unrelated alcohol matters. Oh, I read that. It fills the urge to drink and stops them from wanting more. Um, Larry, how many beers have you had today? I don't know. I keep spelling them. The NHS has a local authorities will be required to make funding available within three months. So you help film and drive? I don't want to brag. I usually drive. Uh, um, the... It, it, it basically, if you drink two beer, two shots, or two glasses of wine, they're now trying to say that you're a colaholic, and it's easy to go to like meetings and stand up in front of them and tell people that you're a Mari squid-like. Theweek.com. Uh, uh, that's not my story. Um, Oh God, no! I got it now. I got it. I got it. I got it. Archaeologists discovered Dracula's dungeon in Turkish castle. I wonder if it, I wonder if there's a wine cellar in it. I that'd be. Do you have any idea that Dracula's wine? I, he, who was it? Uh, Dracula said, "I don't drink wine." But if we had a wine cellar, that'd be a hell of a lot of untouched wine. Archaeologists have discovered that they believe it's a dungeon held by Vlad the Impaler, an inspiration of Bram Stoker's character, Dracula. Because, uh, is that Dr. A. Shonona is Dracula? Um, just, just the reason Stoker imitated him for the book was because he was such an evil guy that it, he made him into the, the character of Dracula. The team found dungeons, tunnels, and a military shelter in Turkey's Tukit Castle. Is Turkey? I thought they were taken over by ISIS. Where Vlad the Impaler was reportedly held in the beginning of the 15th century. The archaeologists discovered two dungeons during the castle's restoration work, which began in 2009. The restoration work led to the discovery of 
secret tunnels between the castle, the military shelter, and the purring baths. So, they found the place where Dracula didn't drink the blood, but based on the guy that was drinking the blood, it was uh, it was one of his. So that's I I don't want to do this anymore. I think uh, you only got one more. No, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna give it to, to uh, uh, no. We got the, the the man that you can't see, the invisible man. He's like, I'm good night. Uh, um, this way, Larry. Oh shit. This way, Larry. Uh, that's the wrong way, Larry. That that's the wrong way. So basically, now they want me to get on air. I wasn't really looking to get on air at all, but now I guess I am going to have to. So here I am, once again, as soon as I can get myself into this chair, here I come all the way from England with only one thing on my mind, and that is to tell you how wonderful the food is at the Arcadia Grill. When you go to the Arcadia Grill, what you're going to do is find some of the most delicious food that you have ever eaten. Let me turn around and look at you. Now, the best thing you can do is the moment that you show up at the Arcadia Grill, make sure you say that you heard about it from the Invisible Man on the correct views. And I, I guarantee you'll get a reaction out of there. All right, now I am on my way back to cheery old England. Nice to see you again. Hopefully see you next Halloween. Good day. Well, Christelle, it's not every day that you see the Invisible Man. Oh, no, it's not. But huh. he has appeared on uh, our show now two Halloweens in a row. It's not so bad, really. All right, yeah. well, who do we have next? Oh, we have Buddy Puff. He is our newest member. He is our intern. Um, so hopefully, uh, we, he can show us what we what he has. All right, buddy, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Are, are you sure? Yeah. 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 The seat. Oh man, the seat's kind of wet. <laughs> hey. Well, oh, that's from Larry. <laughs> he peed in the chair. But you should tell me that he peed in the chair. He can't. That's not cool. Uh, I be tired. I be high. I be tired. Uh, <laughs> ISIS new account shows militant seizing marijuana field in Syria. <laughs> that's kind of cool, man. Like, you got the ISIS people, they're like cutting people's heads off and they're doing it while they're stoned. <laughs> it says they destroyed them. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably burn them. <laughs> he didn't leave any beer, man. The Islamic State reportedly seized the cannabis field on the Free Syrian Army on Here Tuesday. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> like he peed in it. A video posted on YouTube by a group called A3 Mag News shows militants from the extremist group walking through the field in Aleppo province in northern Syria and setting fire to some fire. <laughs> I bet they, I bet they set fire, fire to the plane. Hey, Christelle, now I know why all those girls are running away to go hang out with the ISIS guys. <laughs> Kind of wear the burqa and you can bake in it. The video shows several men in the field holding weapons and talking about marijuana plants. That's because it's like all around them, you know. Maybe when you look, they looming over them like you scarecrows. Some men begin to chop off huge bushels and place them in neatly stacked piles that are doused in gasoline instead of flame. <laughs> there goes the organic element. So basically, you got these people running around, like cutting off people's heads, and they're all like stones. So they, sometimes it's like a cut on the shoulder first. I don't know, man. Uh, this this was this was kind of cool. How many of you, man, when you were growing up, you like to watch the Golden Ticket? Yeah, I mean Gene Wilder. 
before uh, what's his name? Uh, the Golden Ticket. Before he went to his name, <laughs> Tim Burton screwed it all up. Uh, Willy Wonka oh, in the chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out, man. According to Rolling Stone, <laughs> Prime has hired lifetime tickets in five golden records. I, I bought five records and I didn't get one, so I think they're lying, but I'm going to read it anyway. Primus is Willy Wonka inspired Primus in the Chocolate Factory with the Fungi Ensemble is out on October 21st. It's already after October 21st. And mix it in with all the chocolate covered records of five golden vinyl. And check this out like the golden tickets in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Family. Stumbling upon the golden vinyl comes with a great reward. <laughs> Get this, man. Free Primus concert tickets for life. They're kind of old now, so I mean, if you're really young, you're kind of getting ripped off. In the video, where it plays homage to the film's opening credits. <laughs> A little bit of tobacco inspiration. Free Primus tickets for life, man. Oh, I read, I read that. Primus in the Chocolate Factory with Fungi on Salt. <laughs> oh, excuse me. It's the first Primus LP <laughs> to feature the classic lineup. <laughs> Claypool guitarist Larry Lalonde. He used to be in the possessed, man. No, I'm dead serious. If you go, I mean, like, we don't shut the show off. Like, Sam will get home pissed and start, you know, don't shut the show off. But, like, after you're done, like, watching the show, uh, type in Larry Lalonde and Primus. You're going to find it possessed, I mean. You'll find out that he used to be in, like, death metal band. The guy growling. What was I talking about? Oh, the Tim Alexander uh, was, uh, uh, the, since the 1985, he's been gone. <laughs> and, like, now he's back. And if you get the right record, man, you get five free lifetimes of <laughs> Primus. That's, I think I might have said that wrong. Uh, well, that's like all I got. And I think I... <laughs> oh, man. I want to get ready. We got to... And this next guy is... I don't know, man. It's Eric Moore. <laughs> Eric Moore. Just, yeah. <laughs> Check it out, man. Like, for life. <laughs> Primus. <laughs> uh, this way. Oh, <laughs> baby. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I, I guess he did okay for his first ever. I mean, when you think about ever, what do you think? Do you think he'll be accepted by the, the wider listening audience? Oh, I, I don't know. I think he did okay. I know we've only got one one guest left. Who, who is it? Who is our, who, I don't even remember. You've got them all turned around here. Oh, it's Arg Mort. Arg Mortis. Yes. Um, well, where is he from? I don't think I... Have I even met Arg Mortis? Um, I don't really know where he came from. I'm... It's... I don't know. Yeah, well, he, well is, is he the guy looming here? Yes, he is our human resource. I'm the guy that answers the phone. He has public relations. Pub oh, that guy. Yes, that guy. You know, people call the show and he answers the phones and they don't usually ever call back. You know, there are a lot of guests that say they're coming on when, you know, when you and I talk to them. And then as soon as Mr. Mortis talks to them, they sort of, well, they sort of don't call back. Are you? And I am ready. <laughs> I am very ready. Are you ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> Ivy times. <laughs> I like this story. I like ISIS news account shows no, this isn't my story. What kind of idiot pothead? 
Pope Francis praises exorcists for combating the devil's work. <laughs> They're bringing back exor exorcisms. Pope Francis has told a convention of exorcists from around the world that they are doing a sterling service in combating the devil's works. The Catholic Church warned about the rise of Satanism and the rise of occultism. The Pope who frequently cites the fight against Satan is in sermons said that exorcists needed to show the love and welcome the church that was possessed by the devil. By treating people who are possessed, priests could demonstrate, and the church welcomes those suffering from the devil's works. I don't know why Sam had me cover this story. I don't know anything about exorcisms, and I don't know anything about bodies. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm your best friend. If you needed me to help you hide a body, I, I do it, but don't ever double cross me because you know I know how to hide a body. Uh, <laughs> call, call anytime. I'll answer the phone. I'll answer the phone. Put these down before I. Uh, uh, I can't say what I'm thinking. Area 50. He, the Pope, blamed movies and horror movies. I don't think horror movies have anything to do with it. Perfectly normal people like me have always thought this way. Metro Area 51 scientists claim existence of aliens in bizarre deathbed video and says they're long-fingered and friendly. You can take their fingers and you can find, I wonder what color they, they bleed. A dying scientist has made a bizarre deathbed video claiming that he knows what is really going on at Nevada's mysterious Area 51. It says that he reverse engineered a flying saucer technology for defense firm Lockheed Martin. Sam gave me all the stories that you'd give a nutcase. Why would Sam give me all these stupid stories? I could t Bart Bushman made the revelations in a video recorded just before he died in August. Along he died, he wasn't murdered, along with photographs of aliens he claims were taken on disposable cameras within American military facilities. Bushman was a research scientist at Lockheed Martin with multiple patents to his name. Although details of his biography are disputed, does he own the patents or not? They don't know how to read at Area 51. Bushman said in the video recorded on August 7th this year with respect to the alien aircraft, we have American citizens who are working on UFOs 24 hours a day or trying to learn what they do. They can't read. It's... They've had the flying saucer for a hundred years, and they can't read. It is not the first time that someone at the defense firm has claimed that the secrets of the alien spacecraft are being studied at Lockheed Martin. Ben Rich, a Lockheed Martin employee who pioneered stealth fighters, said we already have the means to travel among the stars, but these technologies are locked up in black box projects. I don't believe a word of it, and I would take an act of God to get them to benefit humanity. Anything you can imagine, we can already do. Do they know the things that I can imagine? <laughs> like bodies and things. <laughs> Bushman's confession is peppered with images of alien bodies. He claims there are two groups of aliens under study at Area 51. Aliens with long fingers, webbed feet, and they hail from a planet known as Quintanemia. Bushman says, I wonder what the number is. They always name them after numbers. What number is it? There are different groups of aliens, Bushman said. They divide them into two groups, like the cattle ranch. One group of wranglers, and the other are the rustlers, the stealers of cattle. I guess they're taking us like cattle and mutilating us and carving us and letting our intestines run down. The ones are the wranglers are much more friendly and have a better relationship with us. Deathbed confessions about the existence of UFOs and aliens at face value seem to be very convincing. Why would such people lie, says Nigel Watson, author of Haynes' UFO Investigational Manual. 
Nonetheless, we must be wary of the fact that over long periods of time, memories fade. As if you would forget working with an alien. Why is he giving me stories that you would give an idiot? And people all use these vague recollections to reconstruct events into a story they prefer to believe or the praise of the audience. Who is the audience of a dying person? This doesn't make any sense. I'm going to take Sam and cut his fucking throat. The bottom line is we still need hard evidence to back up these claims, and without this, skeptics can still shake their heads in horror, and the UFO controversy will 